I believe that uh, two questions uh, in particular will be on many minds uh, this morning as we start this uh, summit meeting. First, uh, will the Irish know to the Lisbon Treaty effect uh, enlargement uh, too? And second, uh, has Europe uh, got enlargement right uh, in the Western Balkans? My answer to the first question is uh, a qualified no, and uh, to the second question, uh, a clear and uh, unequivocal yes. Let me begin with uh, Ireland uh, and uh, the aftermath of the no vote, no vote uh, there. I followed the debate in Ireland uh, very closely. Enlargement uh, did not play a role. Enlargement uh, was never an issue in the campaign in uh, Ireland. Besides, uh, accession negotiations uh, have uh, never in the past uh, been disrupted uh, by stops and starts uh, in the institutional reform process uh, of the Union. The same goes for the European perspective of the Western Balkans. Uh, it was uh, said by, I think, uh, Giles and uh, George that uh, we have uh, business as usual now in the Balkans. Uh, I'm not quite sure if that is the exactly correct uh, expression concerning the Balkans, uh, because uh, one of the reasons uh, I find uh, my job so fascinating is that uh, when you go to the office in the morning, you never know which crisis you are facing that day. But nevertheless, uh, while uh, the Irish vote uh, gives uh, cause for reflection, we should uh, certainly not take any sabbatical from our valuable work for peace and stability, progress and democracy in the Western Balkans. In other words, while the European Union considers how to pursue its institutional reform, which is necessary, we keep on, in parallel, we keep on working on a carefully managed and gradual accession process in southeastern Europe. And that is because of our own interest, uh, because we want to extend uh, the zone of uh, European values of uh, peace and prosperity, of uh, liberty and uh, democracy. To illustrate this, uh, since the Irish vote, uh, two chapters have been opened uh, in the accession negotiations, uh, both for Croatia and uh, Turkey, and we signed uh, the stabilization and uh, association agreement uh, with uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina last week. The EU's enlargement policy is on track, uh, clearly. Let me then ask the second question. Where do we stand uh, as regards uh, our policy, our strategy concerning the Western Balkans? I wrote a piece uh, in The Guardian earlier this year and in that piece, I argued that uh, the region had a chance to achieve uh, stability and uh, prosperity once the challenges related to Kosovo's status and uh, Serbia's uh, EU future had been met uh, successfully. And I must say that uh, I was quite surprised uh, because uh, at the time it was uh, very hard to find uh, an editor who would uh, take this uh, piece, this uh, article. Most found it uh, way too optimistic. Uh, I'm very grateful for The Guardian that uh, it, uh, it took this uh, article finally. In that article I wrote that uh, by the end of 2008, uh, all the Western Balkans countries uh, should have passed uh, through the gateway for candidate status uh, by signing stabilization and uh, association agreements uh, with the European Union. 